Hey, I'm back for round three, working on this painting of the hot air balloon. And uh, we've got the sky laid in, we've got all the trees laid in. So the next thing that we want to do then is take and uh, just develop the, the colors on the balloon and uh, add some, some of the work to the trees down here and make just finish this painting out. So let's get to that right now. Um, so uh, you can see what we've got. Everything's looking pretty good. And uh, as I said uh, in the last segment, I think it was, what I want to do next is paint gold over every everything that gets gold or black on it on the balloon. So uh, in order to do gold, gold is one of those colors that's kind of kind of tricky. Uh, it's forms of yellow and it's actually forms of green. So what I'm going to do, I've got uh, some cad yellow here. If you can see where I'm pointing with my brush, I've got some cad yellow, and then I've got some. Uh, a lemon yellow with a little bit of blue in it so it's kind of a green so I'm just going to uh, start in and try to capture what I'm seeing right here now, as you can see this is this is the brightest area and that's pretty yellow and then it it kind of uh, as it fades out it kind of grays down and then this down here is very grayed down gold uh, and multiple multiple golds like you got a little it's dull but it's a little brighter there and on the edge there and then it's darker so uh, it's just process of uh, experimentation process of elimination and uh, I don't know we'll see what we do okay so let me start here moisten my brush get in some of this cad yellow and I want to paint this again uh, very wet so I'm going to come in here and lay this this brighter yellow in there and I can see that it's already starting to make make a really nice feeling here starting to give the the, the balloon some shape not only some shape but uh, uh, just a sense a sense of roundness I guess which would be shape Okay, so we'll keep chipping away at it. Okay, now I'm going to rinse my brush here and I'm going to come back over here and get some, some of this greenish lemon yellow here and just put some of that in here we'll see what that does for it yeah I think that's gonna work as always I'm painting pretty moist trying to leave this area brighter right in there All we're trying to do is just fool the viewer. I'm going to try a little bit of moon glow in this, just to see if that will knock it down a little bit. A little moon glow with my lemon yellow here for the lower part. We'll see. That's pretty dark there. Let me add a little water to it. It's pretty dark, but it's about the right color. Put it, while this is wet, I'm going to put a little bit of this up top up here too starts to give it that that glossy shape or feel 
as it wraps around. A little dark over here on this side. There we go. That looks like shiny, shiny gold, doesn't it? Okay. Again, well, I'm working with such small amounts here that I. Is it sure to get enough paint on my brush? Remember, the darks are coming back over this. So uh, it's going to. We're at liberty to make some errors right now, although we want to keep them to a minimum. And in case anybody's noticing, this is the same brush I put the masking fluid on with. Keep it nice and moist. Like that, right there. Now, we need to get a little bit of moon glow in there too. Darken these values where, they, where the shadows are at, where the shape wraps around. Keeping it simple, don't want to overwork it, overthink it. Cobalt blue, a little cobalt, and just a little bit of phthalo. And I'm getting a little bit of raw sienna, just trying to knock the green down on that a little bit. There we go. Keep in mind, I'm going to put the, that, the darker value of the, you might call it the black band, but I'm going to call it the, actually it'll look like a blue band over the top of that. dark up here on the on the top of this here. Try to capture this the shape or the feeling of that shape a little. Just a little bit. Okay. So I'm gonna let that dry. And I'll work somewhere else. But you can see how that white is really starting to pop out. Now as I look at it here, I do have a little issue and I'm going to I'm going to I'm opting to correct it right now a little bit while I'm thinking about it, but I might correct it more. This side here is too high up, so I'm just bringing it down a little bit. Okay, I think that's better. I think that that works better. Don't believe a word I tell you because I always change my mind. I see something else I want to do here. 
and that is to bring this the shadow side of this while that is wet it'll blend in the top and bottom like that Okay, that's, that's delivering the goods right there. I like that. I'm going to do the same thing over here on this side while this is wet because it'll diffuse out softly. There we go. The darker I make that, the, the brighter and more intense it's going to make the sun feel. That's what that's all about. Okay. I think I'm at a point where I need to just let let this dry here. I told you, you can't believe a word I tell you. I just keep going. Even when I say I'm not going to. But it's everything's working. It's uh, strike while the iron is hot. Don't think poorly of me because I keep going when I said I wouldn't. There we go. Yeah, just as well carry on across here too. Okay. I'm here to tell you the white is officially popping, doing good. Now, I'm going to make a correction on this side. Okay. All right, so let that let that dry there and I'm going to get a little bit of raw sienna here on my brush just real pale and get a tint this basket here just a little with a little bit of that earth tone not too too dark I can always come back in and lighten it up okay we 
pretty good. Put just a little, little more on here. Okay. It's going to be fun. I think it's going to turn out really good. So the next thing then is to get these trees. While that's drying, I'll work on these trees down here. I mean, a little sip of coffee to get me through to the end. Okay. So with these trees, I think in the last segment I was using a moon glow here. And I'm going to grab a little bit of a color here. It's not really color, it's a lack of color. It's called neutral tint. And it's just a, a dark, um, featureless gray, if you will. And this is what it looks like. You might use Payne's gray or whatever. It's just a, a quick way of darkening a, a color up here. And what I'm wanting is to get get these trees down here pretty dark without uh, without having, having to work at it too hard. They're uh, somewhat insignificant to the painting I guess maybe. They're, they've got their role but they're not definitely not the main, the main players. So I'm going to take my brush and then hopefully I can get it dried out here in a second and I can get get it to give me some texture by pushing on it. Pick up a little bit of color here, a little raw sienna into a little bit of cad red, just a little little dab there. So now I'm trying to soften these edges here. Remember I Put, put them in while this sky wash was damp. I feel like I'm straining at this one, but, but these trees for some reason, I'm not really sure why. Dropping those colors in there. In this case, it's that neutral tint. A different brush that one's just not doing what I want so same kind of same hairs but this is a one stroke flat brush so I blot most of the moisture out of it pick it up what's on the palette with with that and then I'm gonna come in here while that's wet Looking for that ragged feel to it. So when this is all done, I, I my goal is to get the viewer to see beyond this, just for this to be the you know the the thing their eye goes right to and this just kind of helps frame it in and shove it up shove their eye up there that way just 
just kind of scumbling here, making these trees up over here completely because they're not in the photo. So there we go. Okay, I, I can live with that. I can live with that a little. If I go much more, it's going to be uh, taking, up, taking over the scene. So I'll grab a little rigger brush here. Uh, it's a Sterling Edwards number no. six rigger. Uh, one of my favorites. Just getting some dark here, and I'm going to come in and just kind of put some put some limb suggestions in here. And what that does is kind of fortifies the the effect of the scene, makes it uh, more believable. And I always keep in mind that this is going to dry lighter than what it, what it looks right now. There we go. That works for me. I like it. I like it a lot. So now we are down to taking the my number six low Cornell masking fluid brush and mixing up that bluish black, which I'm going to do with Moon Glow and Thalo Blue. Almost like a like I'm trying to mix a Prussian blue or midnight blue, something really dark, really rich. And as I look at the photograph, I don't see uh, anything on there, you know, any glare coming off of the blue, like I do off of the gold. Let's see if I can find it here on my phone. This picture, there it is. Zoom in on it. A, a little pro tip, if you will. Okay, so I've got an iPad sitting over here. I got my phone sitting here, and you, in that you, because it's uh, backlit, you can see. Um, you know, you can actually see like the the transition there. You can have to see how bright that that balloon looks against that. But you can also zoom in, and you can see. Okay, so the top of it is uh, pretty dark, and then this is this band here is a little lighter, and those don't have much definition on them. So we want to keep it simple. We, we're not trying to paint a, a photorealistic version of this, but keep keep uh, you know your references handy, and you can just do a much better job with it. So keep that right where I can see it, and I'm going to start up on the top. I'm going to add a little bit of red to this blue too, to knock it down, deepen it a little bit. And I need it nice and dark here to make make that really pop out. This is just a sliver up here along the top, so nobody's going to see the imperfections up there. So don't 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 get too concerned about that and overwork the top. And that blue in this case comes all the way down and is going to touch the second 
or the lower band of blue there. And it pillows out quite a bit there too, which I find interesting. Enjoy this because you'll seldom see me choke up on a brush like this. I just don't do it very often. Now I'm going to switch to a little bit of a, like a cobalt here I think. Light, lighten it up just a little bit and allow for the some illumination on it right there. And switching back to the dark now over here. There we go. So there's the top. That reads pretty good. Now we got to do the bottom. Here. This is the kind of kind of work where you hold your breath. And you feel uncomfortable, like you're going to make a mistake. But that's I just I fight that real hard to get too too wrapped up in it and too concerned and too tight. Like you can even just lay them side by side. See how things are lining up there. back in and tweak it just a little bit. I don't want to get this too wide, so I'm taking care and caution with that. need to come back in. I've just about lost my line here.
a little error I need to correct right here. That needs to wrap around tighter. Right there. That's better. And let's get this. Let me work down here real quick while I'm seeing what I need to do. So I'm just laying the blue over this gold. Those of you that like to paint really tight, this will be your thing right here. I don't normally paint this way, but if you like it, you definitely want to try this one. And then come up here. We're getting super close here. Get a little bit of cobalt on here. As I come back in here, it'll give her a nice little feel. Taking my time. Okay. So that's turned out pretty good. Now what I need to do is come in and get this, this quilting or whatever, whatever you call this. Just get some of that action going in there. And it's really just a bluish gray, real, real thin gray down. So let me do a little bit of that right here. Yeah, that starts to give it some nice shape. And this back here is pretty well, that quilt on that side is pretty well gone. You know, I mean, it just uh, disappears in the dark. brush out a little bit. I want to come in and soften some of this up a little.
don't get too caught up in this right here. This will too many details will ruin it. So just a, a hint of it, a suggestion. Take a little bit of this blue and just go on the underside of the basket. Make that basket have some good dimension to it. Put a little dark on this side of it. And then there's some dark, I guess it's the, the figures right here. People. above it so let's just put put a suggestion of that and they're so tiny I can't even tell really what they are I just that's my guess probably two people in it up there okay all right so I think I'm gonna call that done I want to sign it something I, I always do and I always try to sign it during my videos or during my classes so everybody sees that. I don't know, it's just kind of a finalizing thing for me. There we go. Signature down there where it's kind of non-discreet. Let me take and pull the tape off of this. Find the top tape. And it just rotates around like this. Just a word of caution, always pull away from the painting. Don't pull into it like that. Always pull out. Let me bring this back up where you can see it on the screen there. There we go. Come over here to this side. Pull that off that way. I can get a hold of it a lot easier. I had this on a watercolor block, but I had to pull it off there a while ago for a particular reason. So All right, there we go. Nice, nice painting. I like it. I like it a lot. It, uh, it's fresh. It's exciting. It will capture the viewer's attention from across the room, which is probably the number one thing that I'm I'm always looking for. Um, because the guy that owns this, uh, his Facebook page is called Dreamer. Um, I think I'm going to call this painting daydreaming, and uh, pretty. I, I don't know. It's just it's so simple. It's beautiful, uh, and the subject matter is one of the things that makes it so great. So, all right. Uh, glad that you were able to join me with this. Um, took us three three different segments to get this in, um, but it's been fun. I hope you learned something from it. If I can be of any help in any way. Feel free to reach out to me and ask me any questions. The one thing I'll probably do on this uh, is I'll, I'll come in and erase the pencil lines on the white. There's not very many of them there, but I'll get, a, get rid of a few of them. That'll soften it up just a little bit. So, All right, until the next video, this is Spencer uh, saying thank you for joining me. And I uh, hope, hope you had a good time. And we will get together real shortly, and we'll paint another one, okay? Thanks so much. Bye-bye.